us up out with it. Kick it in the air. In the air, lads. Leave it, Mike. They're only eight. I'm sorry, love you. Knock it wide. The big lad doesn't like the sea. Come on, we're meant to be on holiday. Why don't we just pack it all in and we can move down here? I can't just retire. I don't know, do I? But I can't just up sticks, can I, and move to Spain? Not unless Real Sochi that get on the blower. Eh? What about what I want, Mike? I followed you everywhere. Preston, Burnley, Blackpool. But you said you wanted to travel. Not just around Lancashire. I really want to move to Spain, Mike. And now that Jason's at university... Dance school. It's a degree course. In movement. Well, anyway, the point is, it'll be just the two of us. You and me, living out our days under the warm Mediterranean sun. Careful of you squashing me sausage. Just promise me you'll think about it, eh? Johnsy! Hey, look, love. Hello, son. All right, boss. <laughs> oh, Johnsy, me old muck, and it's great to see you. Oh. Get him a cup of tea, will you, love? How'd you take it, Dodsy? Uh, white and four, please, Mrs B. Great to see Dodgy again, isn't it, love? It's made my bloody holiday, Mike. Oh, she's delighted. So what is it that brings you out here to the back of beyond? Well, boss, I was asked to come and see you. Oh, well, go on, son, fire away. Give us the good news first. Do you not believe this, boss? AC Milan. Their new manager. You're joking me. Oh, well, that's bloody marvellous, that. Hello and welcome back to another episode of My Bassing Manager. I'm your host, Captain Betty Man FM, and I welcome you to this Football Manager 2019 experiment where we take my Bassy from absolute nowhere to his dream job that is England manager. And now, as you have seen, we are AC Milan manager. The giants of Italian of world football have employed my Bassy. <laughs> I did not see this coming. I really did. When I resigned from Osmanli Sport, I just put myself forward for the job. And Milan wanted me immediately. They came fourth last season in the Italian League. They don't get four teams in the Champions League. They only get three. So we're in the Europa League. So that's the first thing I want to tell you to get that one out of the way. But for the first time in a very long time, well, for the first time ever, I actually can see the England job, which is our overarching goal of this entire experiment. We can see the England job in sight. There is some light at the end of the tunnel. But let's just have a little look around. Let me introduce you to Mike Bassett, AC Milan. Actually, this is, I won't say this is actually my number one team just yet. We will get to that if, if they if the board give me enough time. As you know, AC Milan, they're notorious for changing their managers quite quickly. I just want to show you a bit around in this episode. What's what, who the best players are, who are my key players, what's the key strengths, all this kind of stuff. Show you the new tactic that I've got out there as well. Because I've started the season, I'll show you how I've been getting on show you the players that I've already brought in on transfers, etc. And I'm going to bring you one game as well today. So this is pretty much the team. So this is the squad so far. I've got them on what, obviously, how who they play and who they are, etc. kind of thing. And the first name that does come up is our goalkeeper, Gianluigi Donnarumma. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Finally, we've got quality players we're managing quality quality players the only bad thing that does come with these quality players is that the squad dynamic is very very poor well the squad not the dynamic but the support for the manager because they they've got a real concern apparently about just me about mike they don't feel like he's the right man for the job so far so the players are not with me they will do i had this problem with those manly sport where they didn't like me and i soon turned them around the second player to be seen is a player that actually plays for him right now. So there's quite a few players still because we're only in 2025. So we've only been around for what 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 is that? So that's eight years. So eight seasons done. So there are going to be players who are in their early 20s now who haven't moved on from Milan who are going to be pretty much in their prime. Donnarumma and this guy as well. But as you can see, fantastic defender. Ah, Kessie is the man. He's come through this season in real life under Gattuso as the manager. 
and he's a world-class midfielder. We finally got world-class players. How mental is that? But that's this is the kind of ability, this is the standard that we're looking for. This is the player who's going to take us forward. He is our number one midfielder. I'm not going to take you through the whole squad though, but you will get familiar with some of these players the more and more that I release my saves and my episodes. I think what we will do though, though is go on to the transfers before I go into the tactics because I want to show you some of the players that I brought in on loan and some of the players that we bought. So as you can see, we did let a lot of players go out on loan because obviously the Italian squads are absolutely massive. But the first player we did actually let go for real big money. Well, I say big money, it was 9.75 million and it was Fred, 32 years old now. I didn't want him. <laughs> I'm not a fan. And he was on a lot of money. And then second player, same thing. 33 years old, Mohamed Elami. Elami, is it something? He's a lad who plays for Arsenal at this moment in time in real life. They signed him for 15.25 million only a few seasons ago. And we've let him go for 7.5. So Brighton are in the Premier League. 33? I'll take that amount of money for a 33-year-old. But straight on to the players that we've actually brought in. And we've only really signed two players for actual real money. And the first one was this regent from Sweden, from Mold. And his name is Eric Almasto. And he's going to be very good, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be the backup for just now. He's just broken into the Swe uh, Norwegian league, sorry. Not no, uh, Swedish, but he's just broken him. Got him off £24,000. He is a hot prospect worth £5.5 million at the moment. He's two and a half star current ability. Right, and I just need to be honest with you with this one. Two and a half star for AC Milan means they are good for a Serie A team. So very good backup to have. Three star, four star, you're talking like leaders in Serie A football. So anyone that can get to this level is going to be a world-class player. And second player that we brought in for actual money as well is Santiago. We're going to stick with Santiago because I don't know how to pronounce that surname. And he has the potential of being three star, right? We just, again, we just needed some young backup, I felt. This is the player and he's a mercenary. I mean, I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean that he puts his body on the line? I'm not quite sure what that means. But we signed him from Uruguay. Yes, we're in those territories now, ladies and gentlemen, where we're picking up players from the outskirts of, like, back in the nowhere. But out of Mongolia, we're picking up players and we're picking up for a million pounds and then they're going to be world-class players. I think with a bit of training, this kid could be something special. Fantastic physicals, fantastic overall, overall, over, overall game. So very well and welcome to the club, Santiago. And then the rest of the players have been brought in on loans. And the first one is this guy called Mario Spadafora. Hello. That's all I'm going to say. Yes. Four star current ability, potential to go through the roof. He is on loan from Manchester City. He is the starting striker for Italy. He's played nine caps and scored seven goals for him. So he is a very, very, very spicy meatball. Let's just say that. He was signed from Juventus for £55 million pounds, and then they've just never played him. Just never played him. He went on loan last season to Lazio and he's starting up front for us. And I welcome to the club Mario. And then a player everyone will be familiar with, Phil Foden. 25 years old now, only had two caps for England. That's because he still plays at Manchester City. We've got him on loan again from City and he just hasn't played. He hasn't broke through into the first team. He had a loan spell at West Ham for one season. Didn't really do much there as well. 23 games he started in the league. So he's going to start for us. He's going to play because he's quality. I mean, just look at him. Look at all these high teens. 17, 16, 15, 18 vision, 16 techniques, 17 passing. What a player. What an absolute superstar I and mean, he's got him, and he's going to be playing attacking midfielder for us. Welcome to the club, Mr. Phil Foden. Needed a backup right back, and I thought this kid will do an absolute job for us. Joachim Hill. He's actually a real player, plays for Denmark in real life. He's obviously been, he's gone around the clubs a little bit. He starts off on this game at Genk, and he's played for some big teams off him, and then he got signed for £25 million from Barcelona and never really made an appearance for them, only nine times. Went on loan to Atletico Madrid last season, and I've said, come on, come on loan to us for a year, and we will have you as a backup to our right back. And we also needed a backup for our left back as well, and this is probably the best we could get on a loan, to be completely honest with you. 21 years old, Benjamin Garnier. He'll do a job. He will do a job. I actually remember him playing for Besiktas last season. And whenever he's gone, he's actually played games on loan. He'll do a job. He really will. And last but not least, we needed a backup goalkeeper. And again, same as that one. We've brought this kid in on loan from Bologna. Jasper Zillison. Yeah, the guy who plays for Barcelona. It, it, there was one point in his career, him and Teske were, were just kind of swapping around. One played in the Champions League, one played in the league. But anyway, on this game, he signs for Inter Milan and then he went over to Bologna and he played every single game for them last season. And then he's turned 35 or 36 or something like that. 36 years old, 94 caps for Holland. Comes with 
absolute wealth of experience that you cannot buy. Welcome to the club, Jasper. Oh, we did get rid of one other player as well, this kid, for £12 million. And you were probably thinking, why did you get rid of him? He's a backup goalkeeper for us. He's been on loan everywhere. He's been in Udinese and Atalanta since, we, since they signed him. He's actually on the game at Milan. But we had to let him go at some point. So I might have made a bit of a mistake there. But it was either him or Donnarumma that was going. And I weren't getting rid of Donnarumma. Right, and on to the tactics we go. And this is where we're gonna this is where you're gonna get familiar with some of the players, in fact. Actually, no, it won't because I've just played a game in the cup, so some of these lads I have churned around a little bit. So we will be when we've played our first game against Juventus, it will look a little bit different. But this is what the tactic is for this season. We're going with one up front. We're still calling it the Christmas pudding, it's the Milan Christmas pudding, but we now have a real midfielder and a back four. We also play quite cautious, but we do switch it around a little bit. I am taking some advice from my assistant manager because I've never really played in Italy before, even on the game. I once did a network save and I was rubbish on it because I was going too attacking in, in Italy. And I feel like you're just going to be a bit more cautious. Let them come to you and play on the break. And I feel like that's where we're going to be really strong because we've got very, very fast wingers and we've got some really good playmakers through the middle that can go. And we also got these guys right and left back playing as wing backs as well. And the attacker can get beyond the defence. Fast attacking, pressing football, and then break on the counter-attack. And I think we're going to be on to a winner with that. So the season came around and we were expected to come second. That was actually first when it came around. It changed over the summer. I don't know how. I didn't realise it did change. But I was just about to say, we are favourites to win the league. We're actually not. We're second favourites now. Inter Milan are the actual reigning champions at this moment in time. But we've got some players also who are in the starting 11. Kessie's in there. Why is he Why is he a centre-back? That makes no sense. Caldara, he's another one who's very good as well. Donnarumma, obviously, in goal. But no attacking, guys. Now, that's a bit of a shocker for us. We came fourth last season. The board want to win the league. The board also want to get to a couple of cup finals. It's going to be a very tough season for us. We've got to make a good impression straight off the bat. And the quest to get to first starts right here. And as I said, we are four games in to the new Serie A season. And we've just played a game in the Europa League as well. But as you can see, our preseason went very, very well. We went on a tour around Italy. We also played Juventus in one of those games. And we, we won by two goals to one in that one as well. So that gave me a nice little indication that we're going to be okay. Anyway, we started off the season against Atalanta at Atalanta. I thought that was a very, very hard, basically from straight into the deep end, hard game to play over in Bagoma. We started off by going 1-0 up after two minutes with an Augusto Freites, who is a left midfielder for us, a regen, looking fantastic, a wonder kid. He got us off to an absolute flyer, made it 1-0 after two minutes. We then kind of just fell off the wagon because within 40 minutes, we got a player sent off and they'd scored two. And it was 2-1 until the 69th minute where we battled back and got their equaliser to make it 2-2. And do you know what? With 10 men away at home at Atalanta, I will take the draw. And then it was my own debut as manager against Borussia. And we went and absolutely spanked them. Within half time, within the first 45 minutes, we absolutely put them to the sword. 3-0 up with Spadafora, Ritas and Romanogli. Rom Romanogli? Romanogli? Something like that. I should know him. He's an actual real player. And then that was backed up with a fantastic performance. Lazio not doing too well at the start of the season, but a 1-0 win away at the Stadio Olimpico where Mario Sparafora got on the score sheet again. I can't believe I've been able to loan this player in. It's the starting strike for Italy and we've got him on loan for the season. Mental stuff. And then the last game that we played in the league was a disappointing 0-0 draw. We absolutely battered them though. We really did 24 shots, 12 on tight, and we just couldn't break them. Just couldn't break them. Goalkeeper, which is ex-Aston Villa goalkeeper, Pierluigi Gollini, had an absolute world-class game and kept us out. And yeah, it was just one of those one of those days where whatever we threw at them, it just bounced off and just went out for a corner. Or it fit, the, the ball just fell right for them and it ended up being nil nil and we can't do much about them. And then we just finished off with a game in the Europa League and we started it off with a 2-1 victory. An 86-minute winner away at Herenveen in Holland. And it was Spadafora who came off the bench to get that winner as well. So fantastic stuff. Emmanuel Altini, Altini also got a goal in that game. He is a regen. He's a wonder kid as well. He played pretty much most of the games last season. The game comes in two days' time against Juventus and that's the one I'm going to bring you today. So this is how it looks so far. We only played four games, but we are sitting in fourth position with two wins and two draws and 
zero losses, but we are already falling behind very quickly. Four points behind Inter Milano at top of the table. Juventus City in second and Roma first. As you can see, it was dominated by Juventus for many years. Inter Milan won the league in 2019-20. Juventus then won the league three years in a row after that. And Inter Milan are having a small bit of dominance at the moment with two wins back to back in the league. So Milan, I've got an opportunity here to break the mould a little bit and see if we can get the league title this season. Not the presses. We have played quite a lot of games of Ireland. I think since the last time we were together, definitely. We played Bulgaria. We've played four games of Ireland since then. We played Bulgaria in Bulgaria and went 2-0 up and threw away a 2-0 two-goal lead, which was very disappointing. We brought them back to Dublin two days later and had exactly the same result again. We then had a friendly against Paraguay, lost 3-2, and a friendly against Switzerland, which we lost 2-0, which I weren't too bothered about. This was the most important game. Poland at home. They got a player sent off after 21 minutes, but it was already done and dusted. Connor Masterson and John Egan, the two centre-backs, got two goals for us and we were already 2-0 up and we walked away with the three points. And that leaves us very, very healthy at the top of the league by four points, ladies and gentlemen. We've played five games. Germany have got a game in hand, so if they, they win that game in hand, they get within a point of us. But we haven't got many games left. That's the thing. Not many games left. We're playing Germany next. Then we've got Faroe Islands, which we should win. Then we miss our week. That's our week off then, well, our game off. And then we've got Poland away in the last game. Those two games against Bulgaria could come to bite us back in the backside. But if we can pull a victory or just get a, a point against Germany at home, it's going to be absolutely humongous because we'll absolutely batter Faroe Islands. And then it's over to Poland for the mighty decider. So game day is a us. It's the big one in Turin at the Alianza Stadium. It's going to be a big one, this one, isn't it? <laughs> a win here today, though, and it will take us up into second position and only a point behind league leaders into Milan who will be playing, I think, a bit later on, or they are playing on the same day. So this is the starting 11 for us. It's Donnarumma, Calabri, Caldara, Romanogli, Emerson, Kessi, Signorelli, who is a regen, and he's also going to be a fantastic player. Sorry for swearing. <laughs> With Lucas Per... per Peretta? Lucas? We're just going to go with Lucas for this one. He's a world-class midfielder as well. He's 28 years old. I don't think he starts the game with AC Milan. I've never really heard of this player before, but he's £31.5 million pound and he has done pretty decent. Last couple of seasons got better and better. 28 in his peak at this moment in time. And then we've got Fritters out on this left-hand side. We've got Foden and Spada Fora up front. Let's do this. We're playing caution, like I said before. We are away at Juventus, so it's going to be a tough, tough ask. Let's have a look at some of their players. They've got Mustafi at centre-half. I mean, let's get at him. Emery Chan's playing centre-half as well, which is a very different position for him. Can he play centre-half? They are playing him centre-half, so let's get at him. Alexandro, he must be getting on these days as well. 34 years old. Dybala, our old Dybala these days. 31, he's in his prime really still, isn't he? Bernadeschi, 31. And then they've got Moise Keane up front. He's 25 and looks very, very, very tasty going to be a big big game as you can say there's no Ronaldo or anything like that these days they've all retired by now come on boys let's go and do this I'm going to come in I'm going to say to him passionately I'm going to do I go with the same kind of thing as what I would have always said though uh, I'm going to continue doing what I always say go and do this I know we want to get revenge now let's put a good performance in for the fans absolutely and then I'm going to come in and say I have faith in all of you and they all love that they're all motivated they're all gaining confidence and they all look happy and we get the game under our way and we're shooting from right to left in the world famous red and black. And the first highlight goes to Juventus. It's Alexandro. It comes out to Dybala. Dybala now is coming close. Shoots and Donnarumma makes a good save. Everton's onto it and then he's tackled and the ball goes out. Juventus starting strong. He get an highlight though. Ball comes into the box. Goalkeeper easily picks it up. The guy that used to play for us at Pizarri. And he's going to dispute this very quickly. As he knows he's not, he's going to take his time, but he does get it away. Everton does win the header, though, and here comes Moise Keane. It's a big tackle, though, from us, and then we can break. And it's Spadafora now coming forward. He's got. He's waiting for some backup, and he's got some. Calabari's coming there. It's Signorelli. Comes to Lucas, to Kessie, back to Lucas, to Phil Foden now. Foden gives it to Emerson, and he puts the ball to the box. It's Signorelli. Puts it in there, and Spadafora is there to stick it into the back of the net. From the rebound, a Milan lead here in Turin. Fantastic stuff. We were overloading and look how many players we've got bursting into the box. Foden, 
finds Emerson. Emerson then puts in a lovely ball. The guy that plays for Chelsea, that is the guy who was my left back. And there is Spadafora, Mario Spadafora to stick it away. It's Milan 1 at Juventus and nil. Half an hour coming up and they've done nothing since the goal. Neither have we so far. It's been a very cagey game. Here comes Ferritas, puts the ball into the box. So Sandro does really well to get it away. And Juventus can't get out of their own half at this moment in time. Lucas goes for it. It's had a fantastic save. Apparently that would have been a fine goal if it would have gone in. Oh, Lucas again now with the corner. Puts the ball into the box. Spadafora is there again. He wins the header, but the goalkeeper saves it very easily. Here comes Dybala with a free kick. He passes it on to Bernadeschi, who finds Hakimi, who shoots. And it's bounced off the post, I think. We get it out for a throw-in. Romag Noli, that's his name. <laughs> Why did I not remember that? And there is the break. 1-0 up. And I could not be happier, to be completely honest with you. Appreciate your efforts, boys. Absolutely get back out there and continue this for another 45 minutes. Another goal from us, and I'm going to say it's probably game, set, and match. Here comes Freitas, who sticks, oh, I was just about to say, sticks it into the back of the net, and it bounces off the post, and goes out for a goal kick. It's all AC Milan here. Foden puts it into the box, he's headed away. It's Cigarelli to Lucas. Lucas now comes forward, he shoots, and it just goes wide again. And these chances are coming, but we've got to put one away. Over to the 60-minute mark. I'm not going to take anyone off just yet. Lucas is looking a little bit tired in the middle. We get some fresh legs on there. I think that's what we're going to do. He's on the 6.8, so he's not having a bad game. But he is just coming back from injury. He is my captain. I'm going to get Frank Kessie going to the middle as a Mazala. And then we're going to get Lucas off. I'm going to get Baki Yoko on for him to just sit in front of the defence as a ball-winning midfielder. Still on cautious. So I don't really want to change that. Um, I'm not going to give any shouts. Nothing's happened in the second half so far. Here comes Freitas. Goes for the free kick. This time it just goes wide. Just again. Now are we going to hold on for this 1-0? Or are we going to get a second? Or are we going to let these back in it? They've made a couple of subs. But nothing's happening from their side. We've absolutely battered in this second half. Because Dybala though with a free kick. It's a big save from Donnarumma again. Was it over the line? The referee says no. Right. I'm just going to pause the game really quickly. And I'm just going to tell her to concentrate. Because this is now very important. We're coming into the final seconds. Final minutes of this match. Four minutes stoppage time. And uh, there is a highlight for us, which I don't want. <laughs> Caldara to Bakayoko. Back to Caldara. Here comes Phil Foden. He goes for a long pass across the pitch and he finds Freitas brilliantly. Here comes uh, Signorelli. Is that a penalty? The referee says it is. He is going to VAR. The penalty is given after the video review and we could put this game to bed now with only minutes remaining. It's Frank Kessie to stick it away. He does. The keeper went the right way, but it was too hot to handle. And it ends up being Juventus nil, AC Milan 2. What a result this is. I was really worried about bringing you this game. I was actually going to play this game and bring you the game against uh, Pusheya, something like that. But I'm so glad I stuck to my guns and brought you this match because I think we're going to get a clean sheet as well today. And that is it. The referee does blow. And we were apparently exceptional in that second half. Look at the stats. We battered them in that second half. 2-0. What a result. Take that to the bank. Well done, boys. There's confirmation. Two goals to nil. Quality of possession provides victory, apparently. I'm going to just look straight at the league. Not the re not all the games have been played this, uh, this weekend, but we, at this moment in time, sit in second position. I don't think anyone else can actually catch us from there. Roma could get the win. Sassuolo also, but yeah, it depends on goal difference. I'm not sure how goal difference works. In this league, I'm not sure if it goes down to head to head kind of thing, uh, but we are currently sitting in second place and not a bad position to be in so far. Only five games gone though, so it could all change in the next video that I do bring you. For now, things are going very, very well for Mike and the team. Looking at where to come back next, I'm just looking at some of the meaty games that we might have coming up. I like to bring it come back in about 10 games' time. So if I said and come back in like November for, let's say, something like Napoli. And I would be very, very keen to bring you that game. I'm just looking at when we actually play Inter Milan. And that's on Boxing Day. Wow. What a game, eh? <laughs> uh, in the San Siro. And then we've got the Super Cup Final in January, which is a really weird time to have it. I'm not sure why they have it there. Where is it being held? It's being held in Sao Paulo in Napoli. Okay, I say, I think what we'll do is we'll probably play on, get through September, get through October, come back around November, maybe even the beginning of December. Ten games time. I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I have. If you have, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, give it a share. You know what to do, everyone. Go to my page on YouTube. 
Captain Bedman FM, and subscribe to my channel. Turn on your notifications as well so you do not miss every time I upload. And if you want to be kept up to date on certain things on FM, go to my page on Twitter and follow me at Captain Bedman FM. If you want to be part of an FM community, come and join our Discord channel over at FM Creators. These guys, we will be happy to accept you. Oh, you know the drill, everyone. Back in a couple of days' time for some more Mike Bassett Manager and some AC Milan action. Come on. See you later. Bye-bye.